guy is standing right here, but he is kind of famous <laughs> in New York City. Um, M. Henry Jones has been a really big inspiration for me. Uh, he actually created the first rock music video as an animator, and he's going to be launching a show at MoMA on October 31st. They've taken his work and they have converted it into Dolby, so uh, his work has sort of transcended um, into different realms, into different times. And he spent the last 30 years developing this technology that you're going to hear about today. And I think this is really important that we consider working with this so sort of analog, uh, hard technology that can help us see into the future through this fly's eye. You know, it's kind of like, I thought it was kind of a coincidence having fly's eye at OWASP. You know, it's, um, it's a really interesting um, technology. And Keith is the CTO of fly's eye, and he's going to go over some of the technical stuff about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off with you, and then I'm going to, uh, you yeah. want to talk first? Uh, yeah. Okay, Please. Henry wants to talk first, so yeah. he's going to give you a little story. So um, uh, I met up with uh, Keith many, many years ago, and uh, it's not a uh, process, the fly's eye images that you see out in the hallway were not done by <coughs> just me alone. I have about six or seven people I work with, and Keith has been there from the very beginning, and he helps figure out a lot of the technical <laughs> stuff, and he's also very artistically <laughs> inclined. So I'm really happy to have him, and I just wanted to mention that, you know, in the works you see out there, and you're welcome to t come out when you, we get done giving our little talk, and I'll show you a little bit of stuff I'm talking about. But um, what we're doing with that project is essentially fragmenting reality and breaking it into little pieces and then reconstructing it photographically. Um, it's been sort of a quest of mine for many of years, and I worked in lenticular photography for a number of years, and now um, I find that uh, I work with Photoshop and all different types of... Uh, computer stuff that um, wasn't even around when I began this work. But um, Keith has a really very erudite uh, thing he put together. It's a uh, PowerPoint, and it goes through a lot of the technical stuff. And um, I thought he's really great with that. So uh, I'm going to, without taking up a lot of people's time, I'm going to give you over to Keith, my good friend. All right. Well, thank you, Henry. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Natasha and OWASP for having, and Microsoft for having us here. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's just start here. So here you see the fly's eye image, as you saw out in the hallway. And if you see, it's constructed of over 2,000 uh, little images. And each of those images have, or imagelets, has a view of the subject, a distinct view of the subject. And on top of those images sits a screen a lens screen, and together those two things re reconstruct a object wave of the subject, and that results in the multi-dimensional effect that you see. And uh, just to show you what uh, a fly's eye camera looks like, it's a, an array of lenses and little cameras, and they each, as you see, take a picture from a different viewpoint for, uh, of the subject, and each one capture each little camera captures its own little imagelet. Uh, these cameras can be, you know, in the beginning, they were real cameras, little itty bitty cameras, and, uh, but now we're mostly working with virtual cameras. Uh, part of our, we have a patent on this, on parts of this process. Uh, mostly it's processing the little images after they go through, uh, and we use a variety of different sort of software effects to enhance the, uh, dimensionality of the uh, image and uh, you know we guess we'd go through straight Microsoft it's in C sharp right now so we'd be happy about that okay so once we have them processed we have this uh, lens array as you see and that lens array is you know 2,000 plus uh, little lenses and uh, a lot of effort was made into making an optical grade lens array I mean Henry spent many, many hours with lots of people making this lens arrays, or perfecting the process of making them. So as you see here, you have the lens array, you have in the middle picture is, a, is the actual aggregation of all the images, and when you marry them together, you get a dimensional object here, a dimensional picture. So I mean, that's the basics of 
this flies eye photography. Whoops, how do we go back? All right, hold on a sec. I got excited and clicked twice. All right, so I'm not sure there are too many physicists here who know about uh, optics, but just to give you a little bones on what's going on here. So basically, when you're looking at something, light is coming from a source. It hits your scene, your object. And when it hits that, and then it bounces and comes at your eye, what comes at your eye is an object wave. And that object wave contains information about who, you know, when it bounces off the subject. And that, you know, that information is sort of based in three dimensions. One is frequency, that's the color. The other one is the amplitude, how bright or dark it is. And the last thing is the, the phase, which is the depth. Um, and that's how you see an object, you know, without cameras or photography. That's how we, we see things. Whoops. Going backwards. All right, so everybody's aware of normal photography. It's a 3D to 2D process. And, uh, you know, for those who are computer scientists, it's basically a map reduce function. It takes a multi-dimensional or multi-dimensional object wave and flattens it out and just sort of maps and reduces it. So what happens is the object wave gets summed up in the amplitude, the frequency gets averaged, and the phase gets thrown away. And the phase is what gives you depth, and that's what's gone. So we have a process here of uh, integral flies eye photography, which goes 3D to 2D and then back to 3D. So it's sort of like machine learning, where you're teasing out that lost information. And the way that works is that because we know the geometry of each individual viewpoint, it brings all those images together and recovers the phase information, which gives you the depth. That's sort of more or less the theory of flies eye photography. So our current applications that we're looking at for doing this, this is a, a fine art portrait of Jim Jarmusch, if you know who that is. Uh, and uh, we, uh, Henry has a numerous beautiful portraits of, of famous arts personas in the, from New York. We also look at using it for advertising, also education applications, uh, specifically you know, in the classroom, some you know, to further sort of illustrate something with some dimensionality. Um, possible physical security with imaging, and also it could be used to, I mean, a lot of our work's done now in, in uh, the virtual domain, so we could take point clouds or sonar and easily image those out too. So my last thought, and we don't, you know, we don't really, we appreciate OWASP being here, but one of the thoughts I thought about fly's eyes, I know that, uh, this is just sort of a thought, is that, you know, when people, you know, they have their networks and they're worried about you know securing them and they get you know I think Alex said very clearly you have too much information but in a way you have it's too much information you put it into uh, SEIM or something like that trying to tease out some meaning but I always thought it might be interesting if you sort of use the fly's eye as a uh, sort of metaphor and use the geometry that is the location of your nodes how they the topology of your network and maybe use that information to recover some of the lost information that you may have and maybe get a better picture of your of cyber events. Anyway, yeah. that's it. Uh, thank you very much. All right. <laughs>